Are you fighting in the battles of life? Are you losing? Are you winning? What makes the difference between defeat and victory? Why is it some win and some don't? I want you to stay tuned for the next 30 minutes because you're going to learn something from God's Word that will change your life. For more than five decades, Pastor John Osteen has taken the good news of Jesus Christ to the nations of the earth. Throughout the years, signs and wonders have followed this miracle ministry. And today, from the 8,000-seat Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas, see the miracle-working power of God in action and discover how you were made for miracles. And now, Pastor John Osteen. Welcome to the program. Praise God, we're having a good time preaching about the Lord Jesus and the authority of the believer. It'll change your life when you learn what the Bible says about your authority as a believer. And you can't know about your authority as a believer unless you know the Word of God. And the entrance of God's Word gives light, and He will hasten His Word to perform it. So if you know about the Word of God, then you'll know what authority you have in Amen. the Lord Jesus. And that's right. That's why we teach the Word of God to you on television. I want to remind you, this Saturday night, we will have our great Christmas celebration. I want you to come early for a seat. We can only uh, take in 10,000 people here, and this place will be jammed out. We have Donna Summer. She's going to be singing and giving her testimony about what Jesus means to her. And we're going to have Phil Driscoll playing his horn and singing and telling about Jesus. We're going to have the Love All People group. Dodie and I are going to be here. Jesus is going to be here, and you are going to be here. We're looking for you this Saturday night. Now, you in the Houston area still have time to get ready and come out to the morning service to today at 10 o'clock. But uh, right now, let's get our Bibles, let's go into the service, make our confession, and teach you the Word of God. Let's hold up our Bibles, make the devil mad, Jesus glad. Everybody wave them around and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to open your Bibles again to Mark chapter 13, verse 34. This is our master text. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants. Everybody say this, I am his servant. I am, servant. I am, a, believer. I am a believer. He has given authority to me. Authority. You see, the Bible teaches that uh, Christians in the Bible had authority. I want to tell you a story. When Dodie and I, and the pilgrims are here, Dodie's mother and daddy, and they've heard me tell this story so many times, and so have many of you, but I want to tell it again. You know, when we first got married, a few years after we were married, uh, they, they came to us and said, uh, we want to buy you a brand new car, and we're going to pay cash for it. Hey, don't you know that's good news to young folks? So, I mean, we looked everywhere for that car. We looked, at, I didn't want to make a mistake. Man, no way I'm going to make a mistake if it's going to be paid for. So we looked and I looked and I looked and I shopped and I shopped and I kicked tires and opened doors and examined engines and I wanted to be sure I had the right automobile because Brother Roy Pilgrim and his wife was going to pay for that. And I didn't want to make a mistake. Could I have an amen? amen? Well, to make a long story short, I finally found it. And I drove it home. Dodie and I were so happy. And the very day that I parked that car in the garage, I was listening to the television. I went in there. They had an, an ad on there about an automobile. Man, I was still interested in autos. So I sat down and listened to this man describe this car, describe the engine, describe the tires, describe how it would drive, described all about all the special features. And the longer he talked, the sicker I got because I knew I had been taken and I shouldn't have bought that dumb thing I had in the garage. Man, I was so upset. Why didn't I wait till I heard this fellow? because he had the real automobile that I really wanted. I was so sick, I wanted to go out there and drive that car out, take it back. 
But you know, I kept watching that man. And when he said what kind of automobile it was, I had one just like it sitting in the garage. <laughs> you see, I had something in my garage and I didn't appreciate it until somebody who knew more about it told me about it. Did you know you got far more in your garage than you realize? When we begin to get the Word of God and begin to hear God describe the new creature and who we are and what we have and what we can do and realize that's us, thank God we'll be able to rise up and become victors. Amen. Now, we're talking about the authority of the believer. You can be a believer all your life, die and go to heaven and never enter into that authority. But once you enter into that authority, your marriage is going to change. Once you enter into that authority, your financial world will change. Once you enter into that authority, your children will change. Once you enter into that authority, your whole world will change. And I talk to a lot of preachers out there. I'm telling you, when I entered into that authority realm, my ministry changed from a little ministry on the corner to a worldwide ministry because I learned how to take dominion in the realm of the ministry. Could I have an amen? Amen. Now, I'm, uh, in these last three services, I'm preaching on the keys to authority. One is redemption, righteousness, and resistance. I want you to say redemption. Yes. Talk out loud. Yes. Righteousness, righteousness. And resistance. resistance. Now, you must understand redemption. You must understand righteousness. And then, if you understand all of that, but you don't understand resistance, your part, you will never get anything in this realm. You know, so many people just passively, you know, just drift through life and say, well, you know, if God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. No, that's not true. That's a devil talking to you. Well, you know, God knows where I live. God knows my address. God knows my name. If he wants to get me out of this trouble, after all, he might be teaching me something. I'm telling you, how sloppy can you get in your words? You got to be careful what you say. You see, you've got to realize you can do something about it. Stop having your pity parties. Stop having your pity parties. Rise up and enter into what God has for you. Can I have an amen? amen. Okay, we talked about redemption on the last telecast. But I'm talking in this telecast on the second key, and that's the key of righteousness. Did you know that when people live a condemned life, when they live under condemnation, you can never act in authority as long as you live in a sense of inferiority. The biggest tool the devil has is to keep you ignorant and make you feel unworthy you don't have the right. You're not good enough. Your past is too bad. He'll nullify you. The very fact that you stand up and start to say, in the name of Jesus, devil, I command you to do this. The devil will say, well, now look here. You lived a bad life. You lived, used to live this way. And after all, you lost your temper last week and got mad at your wife. And, and then you did this. And, that, and he'll bring you under condemnation. There's a scripture over here. In Isaiah, you don't need to turn to it. I'll just read it to you. Listen. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You know, every revelation that God has ever given to me when I encounter demon powers and the devil, he has never shown me defeated, always victorious. Always victorious. I know when this church first started, a little handful of people, I'm telling you, it's a miracle the devil didn't tear it up. And God warned me every time there was danger to this church. And one night I had a night vision and, and this woman was, uh, this demon power was in front of me, had long hair like a woman and that thing started coming against me, you know, and I just stood my ground and I said, in the name of Jesus. And that hideous looking thing just turned around and ran out and disappeared, just started disappearing from the bottom of just disappeared. Now, there was a woman came by here, a false prophet is trying to tear our church up. You may remember that. And uh, God showed me that I was more than able to take care of that in the name of Jesus. He never has shown me running from the devil. He's shown me the devil running from me. 
I remember when I went through that great trial when my nerves broke down because I was out of the will of God and going against the grain. God came to me and I had a visitation and this man was in this room with me. You've heard me tell it many times. And this man uh, was trying to get out that door and this man over here sitting up there on a, on a throne turned out to be the devil. He had his hands uh, folded like this and he was just holding that man in his gaze. That man was moving, moving like this, but he wasn't making any, any distance. He couldn't get to the door. And that devil was just sitting there just holding him just like that, just gazing at him. Couldn't, couldn't do a thing because he had him in his power. And I'm standing over here on this side watching all this. And I saw, and I saw the devil. And I saw that man trying to get out. He couldn't get out. And you know what I saw myself do? I heard myself say and do. I said, I will walk out of this room in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Did you know I just walked out of that room? You know, when I, uh, when I got into this terrible situation I was in, I was weeping and crying. God said to me, well, what did I show you in the visitation? I, and I went through all of that. And God said, well, get up and do it. Walk out of it. And I walked out of that sickness and trial in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What I'm saying is God has never shown me in any visitation anything but what I was more than uh, uh, enough to conquer the devil and demons in the name of Jesus. God sees us as winners. I said God sees us as winners. I said God sees us as winners. I hear some of you on television say, well, oh, if God made me a winner, how come I'm down, knocked out? I don't know where to, it's because but the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. It may be that you need to get in a good church where they praise God, speak in tongues, prophesy, pray for the sick, and cast out devils. It might be that you ought to throw your pride down and go. Somebody said it's too far to drive to Lakewood. Let me tell you something. You drive everywhere else. Why not drive to church? Amen. Amen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's what God says. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is your heritage. Now notice, and their righteousness is of me. You notice where he puts that? He, he, has, to, he has to nullify the power of condemnation from the devil. The reason you can reject every weapon that's formed against you and condemn every tongue is because you know you're righteous. Because you know you're righteous. Their righteousness is of me. It's not in good works. Now, when you got saved, let me talk about the inner man. When I got saved, I lived on the inside of my body just like you live on the inside of yours. And the person on the inside is the real person. Could I have an amen? amen? You live on the inside of your body. That's the real person on the inside. Now, the person that's lost is the person on the inside, dead to God, in darkness, in trouble, lost without God, no life, all death, no light, all darkness. But when Jesus comes in as our Lord, we become light, we have eternal life, we become what the Bible calls a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, God, God does a work on the inside of us, and when you get saved, you have the nature of God. The Bible says he became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. So God looks upon that inner person, born again, absolutely as righteous as he is. There is, therefore, now, say it with me, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. You see, you got to re realize that God has made you righteous. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. You ever get out and pray, start praying, get interested in praying, and the devil said, who are you? Look what you've done. You're not righteous. Look how you've lived. You've got to realize that you can fight that off and defeat the devil. Say, I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. Did you know you can grow in faith, but you can't grow in righteousness? I said, you grow in faith, but you can't grow in righteousness. Every born-again believer is as righteous as God himself. That's why you're going to go to heaven. There is, therefore, now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. You see, you can never exercise authority until you know who you are. 
The devil comes and he begins to condemn you. Say, hey, wait, wait a minute, devil. Hold it, hold it. Hold it, devil. I'm in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. I walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Now, the devil will come and he, when you try to exercise authority, and he'll bring up all your past. And he'll bring up all your sins. And tell about all the things you've ever done. But you know, you need to realize that the Bible teaches a marvelous thing. It says, this is the covenant that I will make with them in those days. I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. They'll be my sons and my daughters. And their sins and iniquities I will remember no more forever. If, if you on television would go to God after you're born again, I don't care if you've been the worst prostitute in the world, the worst dope dealer in the world, the worst murderer in the world, the worst blasphemer in the world, or the most prideful person in the world. If you'd go to God and say, God, would you pull up my record? The devil's tormenting me. I'm born again. Pull up my record and see what you have against me. God puts your name in there. He pushes that button, and that computer of God buzzes. And so here's the readout on you. Got your name on it, and there it is. And God looks at it, and he said, Look, I don't have any record that you've ever committed any sins. The only record I have is that on a certain date, you were born again because you made Jesus your Lord. Amen. Amen. And when the devil comes around, you see, and brings up your past, say, Sit down, Mr. Devil. You're interested in the past, mine's clear, but let's talk about yours. You used to be an angel. You used to be a great man in heaven, and you fell, and now look at you, and your past is not so good, and check in the book of Revelation, your future doesn't look very good either. Amen. I mean, you start talking to the devil like that, and I'm telling you, you'll put him on the run. When the devil brings condemnation on you, you know, and, and he comes against you and you're saying, in the name of Jesus, do this, and he brings up all your sins. Say, listen, devil, I want you to know the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to me. I stand not because of my goodness. I stand because of the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus mastered you. I have his victory. I come against you. You will not take my family. You will not take my finances. You will not take my body. In the name of Jesus, I command you, you go. And Christ in you will put the devil on the run. I'm telling you, you need to stand up and exercise that authority. I am what it says I am. The Bible says I am. I have what the Bible says I have, and I can do. Everybody shout, I can do. I can do. Shout it five times. You see, the Bible says you can do. You can, do, you can do what it says, I, uh, what, what, what the Bible says you can do. Amen. What does the Bible say you can do? The Bible says you can resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Amen. The Bible says in the name of Jesus you can cast out devils. Amen. Do you know your real trouble is not your husband, your wife, your family, your job? Your real trouble is the devil and demon powers that are arrayed against you? People, you better listen to me. I'll tell you, our generation is so saturated with demon powers on every hand. I'm telling you, it, it only, it, it's amazing. It's on the media and everywhere. And the only name that they will bow to is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have given him a name, the name of Jesus, and every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. The name of Jesus is the authority of the believer. Now, now you say, well, Brother Osteen, I, I tried that once, and you know, you know, it just didn't seem to work. Listen, when you use the name of Jesus, it does work. One man came to me in a meeting I was holding, and he said, uh, Brother Osteen, he said, uh, he said uh, would, you, would you command the devil to get off of my case? And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you, Satan, leave this person. And uh, they came back and said, he didn't leave. I said, how do you know he didn't leave? I said, do you see demons? He said, no. I said, well, neither do I. But God does. And God said, if you use the name of Jesus, they flee. I believe God. I'm telling you, when you use the name of Jesus, the power comes into play. But as long as you 
weep and cry over your past that's already been forgiven. As long as you listen to the devil, as long as you live under condemnation and don't walk in righteousness, you will never exercise authority. The devil nullifies you. But you say, Brother Ocean, since I got saved, I sinned. Sure, I have too. But the very moment I sinned, I knew it. The very moment I sinned, I asked forgiveness or wanted to ask forgiveness, and I got cleansed right then. Now, if you're in disobedience, you're on the devil's territory. But in me, how many of you, when you do wrong as a Christian, you immediately want to get rid of it? Shout amen. amen. Shout it again. Amen. Well, let me ask you this. If you confess your sins, how many days or weeks does it take God to send down a message from heaven that you're forgiven? How long does it take God to forgive you? The very moment you ask forgiveness, he said if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Amen. And to cleanse us from how much? How much? I can uh, hear you. To cleanse you that very moment from all unrighteousness. So, you see, the devil wants you to, you know, you take preachers once in a while, you know, uh, I'll, I'll get something happened to me and I'll feel guilty, you know, and I'll ask, have to ask God to forgive me, you know, and, and I'm going to preach that day. And the devil said, oh, who are you? Who are you? What are you? What are you getting up there preaching for? Trying to bring me under condemnation. You know what I tell him? I said, devil, I don't care. Well, I'm forgiven. I don't care uh, what you say about me. I'm not up there preaching, John Osteen. I'm up there preaching Jesus. Amen. Amen. And beside that devil, I'm cleansed. And I'm free. And God remembers my sins no more forever. Did you know throughout the endless ages, God will never bring your sins up? Throughout the endless ages, it'll never be held against you. In the high court of heaven, the Bible says you have been acquitted. In the high court of heaven, the Bible says you have been declared not guilty. The high court of heaven says that your sons and daughters are the most high God. Authority comes when you know that you are the righteousness of God. You are forgiven. You are clean. There's no condemnation to you. And therefore, you can stand in the name of Jesus and put the devil on the run. Never accept that, that uh, uh, condemnation. Never entertain it. Always walk in redemptive realities. Always honor the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, many of you are fighting battles. Right here, thousands of people right here in this building. And hundreds of thousands out there who are viewing television. You're fighting battles. You're waiting on God to do something about it. And yet you're a believer. And, and, and God is waiting on you. You say, well, I, I've just been waiting and waiting and waiting for God to straighten out my situation. Wonder why he wouldn't. You see, God gave you authority and he told you to cast out demons. He told you to resist the devil. He told you to speak the word of authority. He told you to command. So I'm believing that you will rise up and actually begin to speak it out. I command you, Satan, take your hands off of my life. Take your hands off of my family. Get out of my finances. In the name of Jesus, I resist you. I'll tell you, folks, the devil will pass up your house. Yes, he will. And you're going to be not the victim. You're going to be the victor.